Francis teaches us that something that stifles our boldness and zeal is a defeatism which turns us, he says, into querulous and disillusioned pessimists and sourpusses. Just think about that for a minute. In Chile, when he was speaking to the young people, he said to them, you know, don't look like you're sucking a lemon, you know. And in Evangelii Gaudium, his document about evangelization, he tells us, don't, don't look like you're at a funeral all the time. One of the noticeable things about everything Pope Francis offers us is it's, it's ladled with joy, the joy of the gospel, the joy of love. His latest exhortation, rejoice and be glad, you know, it's filled, filled with joy. Now here's the thing, and it's really vital for catechists. Do you know something? If you're not enjoying it, they're pretty unlikely to. I mean, it's not that earnestness and solemnity are not important. They are, of course, but sometimes we miss the point in our catechesis that people need to meet the virtue of joy. Otherwise, what is attractive in a miserable message? In one of my favorite stipulations Pope Francis gives us, he says, we're called to be joyful messengers of a challenging proposal. Joyful messengers of a challenging proposal. Now look folks, catechists, this is what I'm asking you to do and it's hard. It's really to relax and to recognize that this is an opportunity and the entire salvation of the child or the person in front of you does not depend on your word structure in the next two minutes. So it's kind of important that you relax and you be yourself and you be your joyful self. Do you know, in a piece of advice from a Morris Letitia, Pope Francis's document on the family, he says to parents, give your children a memory of you smiling. Give your children a memory of you smiling. Why? Because it gives authenticity to your belief. St. Therese talked about the face being the mirror of the soul, you know? Now look, why have I spent so much of my life doing the opposite? Ooh, you know, so Emily, she's four, she's four, she's four. And she comes up to me and she says, Dad, here's a church, here's a steeple, open the doors and here are the people. And I remember saying, oh, I learned that, Emily. And then she came up with another one. She said, Dad, I've made my own up. She's four. She said to me, here's a church, here's a steeple, open the doors and here are the people. And then she waggled her fingers and went, shh. And I remember thinking, oh, is that what I've taught her? I believe that girl has a divine origin and an eternal destiny that God gave her to me to cherish and love. And by the time she was four, what did she learn about God? Shh! Now please, don't get the wrong impression. I'm not suggesting that we come to mass on roller skates. That respect and solemnity are not vital in growing up. But do you know something? That's not the primary concern right now of Pope Francis. If you read his documents, and by the way, we find this in Pope Benedict in Deus Caritas Est, there's a real danger that the church might lose her joy. In fact, in Evangelii Gaudium, the joy of the gospel, Pope Francis says, don't be robbed, don't be robbed by the thief that comes in the night and steals what? steals your joy. Folks, the message of the gospel has to be a smile that communicates with our face. In fact, be joyful and tell your face. Because if you don't, the joy sits inside you unreleased. What we would like is for the children or the young people or the adults in your groups to meet not just what you believe, but the impact it has, that we are 
living the joy of the gospel. And the joy of the gospel should tell us to be happy. So, when you're leading, when you're fronting, when you're preparing, lighten up a bit. You'll be okay. The Spirit's with you. Relax and be joyful. Catechists. Here's a quote. Take a look at it, followed by a couple of questions. Mm -hmm.